Technobrain, Africa's second fastest growing technology company. Africa came first, we came in second. On Unstoppable this week, I'm talking to Mr. Lee Karuri, another successful businessman in the real estate business. You don't want to miss this story of humble beginnings and sheer determination. I'm your coach, Pete Deng, and this is Unstoppable. Hey, hey, hey. hey. So good to see you again. Good, Pete. Welcome. Wow, it's been a while. Yes, it's been yes, a while. Yes, Thanks for being <laughs> on Unstoppable this week. Wow, Lee, it's good to see you. Yes, and you yes, have yes, such yes, an yes. amazing story oh. that I've been wanting to get to the bottom of. Okay. And okay. I want us just to sit down and sort of unpackage this as we go. Okay, you're most welcome. Lee, maybe the best place to start is to take you back to your college days. I read something in a, a local daily that referred to you as a college hustler. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. Oh, those were interesting days um, in the university. Of Nairobi. Of Nairobi. That's yeah. where I was studying architecture. Okay. And um, when, when I was just beginning my university studies, uh, my father passed on mm. and uh, we were left several of us in the family several siblings uh -huh. and my mom as well to look after so in the university I had to come up with ways, new ways of survival so you had to hustle I had to hustle uh -huh. find extra income what were you doing uh, I used to paint. paint I used to paint okay I have a, a, a gift of art and uh, I enjoy using the watercolor so okay. in the university I could paint and go into town and sell my paintings, okay. get an extra income. I also used to uh, consult a, a little bit of support for practicing architects in town, okay. walked to their offices, mm. get a little bit of work to do for them, get a little bit of money to be paid, okay. added some income. And uh, this life, you know, was, was a hustling. When I, I graduated in 1989, mm. for the next uh, four years, okay. I was working for some uh, leading firms of architects uh -huh. in the uh, city of Nairobi. And how old were you when you decided to step out on your own? I, I was uh, 30. You were 30 years I, old? I was 30 years old okay. in 1994. 94? Yes. And you decided to do what then? I, uh, when I, I was working, mm. I always desired to work for myself. And uh, we set up with a partner who is, uh, used to be my classmate okay. in, in the university, in, uh -huh. in college. Okay. We were in the same year, uh, called Chema. Katua. Okay. And uh, we agreed that uh, we would uh, set up an office oh. and uh, we created a, a, a company uh, called Dimensions. Dimensions. Architects. Architects, okay. And we, we, we got out into the market. Uh -huh. uh, uh, well, tell me, tell me about that. You January. say we got out into the market. Yes. I mean, it sounds well, easy. <laughs> no, no, it, it was a hard decision. Uh -huh. You know, to design right. from uh, an employed job, right. always is not an easy decision. Okay. And in those days, in Kenya, mm. the uh, economy was not good. The start was very tough. Mm. It was very tough. In the initial years, uh, we did not have uh, much money, mm. and uh, looking for work was hard. We were not well known, mm -hmm. and uh, we were getting ourselves in the market where established companies were. Okay. We were three of us, mm. my partner, I, and one employee. That's how we started. Okay. And even to pay uh, our sales was yeah. difficult. And Lee goes uh, for what he believes in. When he believes in something, he goes ahead, irrespective of the challenges. He's very aware of what challenges are ahead of him in everything he has undertaken, but he goes ahead and just moves day by day. He's not easily discouraged. And um, along life's way, whether from uh, family or business, there have been many many points of challenges and uh, points of discouragement, but uh, he's able to just keep very clear about his goal and keep moving. So mount one challenge after the other and just keep going. We started reaching out to uh -huh. some of the uh, uh, clients uh -huh. where we worked. We okay. also talked to some of our friends uh -huh. to give us networks and contacts. And we went into uh, a fairly aggressive campaign mm -hmm. to set up our company. But and, it was and it grew, very hard. And it grew and grew. It, it, I understand you yes. went regional at one point. Uh, yes, what, yes. At what stage <laughs> was that? When things couldn't work mm. in Kenya and we had to get out into Uganda, mm. we were in the hands of an architect who became our friend. Uh, a local Ugandan architect? A local architect. Ugandan architect. Okay. He was very hospitable uh -huh. and we agreed to work with him for six months mm. on a project, okay. on a joint venture basis. Mm. And we did most of the work. Mm -hmm. After six months, we knew that our breakthrough had come mm -hmm. when we got our first payment. Mm -hmm. Because we were not registered in Uganda, 
the funds came through his account, oh, no. through his office. I know where this is going. When he was paid, <laughs> he disowned us. So he kept the money? He kept the money. Oh my God. released no penny. And we felt that we had reached the end of the road. The Uganda experience was a challenge, no doubt about it, especially very, very, at the very, very early stage. So the amount of loss, first of all, was very big. Very, very big. The amount of energy and hope that was invested in that uh, enterprise was really big. And uh, for us, it was really to say, yes, we are in this situation. This is the reality. And to just be practical about it and say, what can we do? What is the good that can come out of here? And one, it is the lesson that not everybody can be trusted. So when you get into business, and especially when you get into partnership, how do you then make sure that you get your deal, you give your deal, and you get your deal? We left Uganda for yeah. a while. <laughs> I don't Came back to Kenya, there was no more work. Okay. And um, at that point, we were faced with a closure mm. of our dreams. Mm. And we said we gathered courage with my partner and said no. If we don't proceed and we close down our company now, to start again okay. in the future mm. will be so hard. So you decided to keep going? We decided, let's start again, let us keep going. I'm so anxious to hear where, where your next <laughs> big step was. And, 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 and what we eventually mm. did is that uh, we went back to Uganda mm. and we got some new networks on our own and got some good work. You got some work? Yes, and okay. then we were able to rebuild ourselves okay. and we started getting some good income. Uh -huh. Through leads in Uganda, we were able to network ourselves to Rwanda. So you went to Rwanda? We went to Rwanda. And set up there? And we set up there. Okay. The Ugandan business grew well mm -hmm. over the years. In fact, now Dimensions Architects mm. is one of the leading firms of architects in Uganda. Okay. Yeah, today. I did Having know that. done several buildings, mm. despite that very difficult start those days. Yes. Now, Lee, this is all about your architectural practice. Yes. Uh, today, you are known in Kenya as a leading property developer. Yes. Uh, multi companies, multi projects going on. Yes. Can you talk to us about the transition to property development? Ten years ago, in uh, at the beginning of the year 2005, mm -hmm. after really talking and thinking through uh, two years, mm -hmm. I always wanted to transition to be a real estate developer. Okay. And in the year 2005, uh, the time came. Oh. I approached one of my clients okay. who had a piece of land but did not have any money. Mm. And I requested them that, can we work together? I look for the resources, you bring the land, we start small, and we put in a project. So that was the beginning? That was the beginning. Fast forward. Yes. Then what? Then, years later, uh -huh. uh, that property we were able to develop, okay. and uh, we were able to move into the market, yeah. establish ourselves. Right. And as the years went, went on, uh -huh. we established several uh, 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 companies, mm. different investors, mm -hmm. uh, where I've been chair, mm. and uh, we started going into big time real estate. In transitioning into this new area, yes. which is very competitive, yes. very difficult, yeah. um, tell us about some of the really challenging moments that you've experienced. Yes. Yeah. Now, so, some of our, our, our challenging moments mm. is uh, borrowing from banks. Borrowing. It's a story and that... Unable <laughs> to pay back. Mm. Unable to pay back on time mm. uh, because developments require a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, the amount of money that we have put in developments, we have been able to get from lenders. Mm. Some of it is through private equity mm. and other money is from individual investors mm. and our own investments. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, because of uh, large borrowing, mm. we were faced with the situations when banks felt that uh, our repayment We're not good uh, was not good enough. Acquiring land in, in Kenya is, uh, is, not an easy, is not an easy thing. Um, as Kenyans, we have a very strong attachment to land. And um, as a result of that, it becomes very difficult to trade with land as a commodity. So that when I walk into a shop and find an object I'd like to buy, there is no struggle for anybody releasing it. But with land, you find we have that attachment. It gets more complicated because the documentation can also become tricky. The competition has increased over time. Mm -hmm. There are several developers that, Coming are, putting, up every day, yeah, guess, that yeah. are putting up a lot of properties. Right. So we have had to uh, up our game mm. uh, <laughs> to be able to provide good services mm. and our uh, clients to be happy right. and to be able to edge mm. uh, our competition. Getting the infrastructure in place is another challenge. Not every part of this country has power 
has water, has decent roads, and that becomes a cost for a developer. And just getting that in place can be quite expensive. So from architect to, to being a property developer, yes. uh, entrepreneur, yes. you've gone to being an advocate and a, and a visionary, if I may say. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Uh, in a nutshell, yes. uh, give me just a picture of some of what you have in terms of projects ongoing, assets out there, and a picture of the Lee Karuri world of, of <laughs> properties right now. What, what, what do you have? Uh, the, the various uh, areas that uh, we have been working on, mm. through Home Africa, we are doing uh, s several projects. We have uh, a project uh, called Mega, a new city in, the, new Kiabu city. Country, yeah, in the Kiabu County. Mm -hmm. so it's a very well-known uh, new... We are decongesting our cities. Yeah. So uh, that is on 774 acres wow. of land. Mm. We bought a coffee farm and uh, we are translating that into a new city. Into a city? Yes. Mm. I'm also chair of uh, another development company called mm. Resorts okay. and Cities. That is building, another company? Yes, another <laughs> company. That we are building yeah. new resorts and new cities. Our first project is in Naivasha, called Loganwood Gate. We are building a golf resort city um, on 2,400 acres. We are already, it's already under construction. The, pros the progress is going well. We have people who've already bought into the project, people who are already building their homes into the project. So it is becoming a reality every day. Our next project is Makuyu Ridge, which has been newly acquired. We have acquired a thousand acres of land in Makuyu, in Muranga County in Kenya. And um, we're looking forward to, do to building a country resort city, a place where people can retire or work from. It's very near Nairobi and basically enjoy what life is supposed to be. We see ourselves playing a major role in economic development for Kenya, East Africa and Africa. And uh, we see that uh, there's still much more we can do. Lee, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be with us on Unstoppable this week. Your story is truly inspiring and I'm sure there are many, many people who are watching this who would want to follow in your steps. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It was, it was a pleasure. And I want to finish the program this week by sharing with you a little poem. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but you think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who said, I can. I'm Pete Ondeng. See you next week.